Hi, so I am making buns, fast, simple buns, um, round and uh, mini hot dog buns. Um, this method can be used to make like a whole loaf of bread, so you can use this mixture for like one whole loaf if you want, or you can do really whatever you want with it. Um, it's fast, it's easy. I managed to have everything that could possibly go wrong go wrong while I was making these. I broke my teacup and um, I got the dough over hydrated when I was doing the hot dog um, buns. It was only by an extra um, 10 mils of water, but it just meant that everything stuck to the bench. So you just use a bench scraper and add another tablespoon of flour and you mix it together and it all comes up fine. So even if everything goes wrong, this mixture still works brilliantly. So the recipe is 300 grams of strong bread flour, um, two tablespoons, oh no, two teaspoons of caster sugar, um, seven grams of yeast or one sachet of yeast, it works out about a teaspoon and a quarter of yeast, and a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, 200 mils of uh, warm water, and that is it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you. making really quick bread. This is water, yeast, sugar, salt, oil, and flour. I've got my water at, uh, I think it's about 27 degrees. So if, because we're doing a fast one, I want the yeast to be as active as possible. So I've got it, um, I've warmed up my yeast and I'll try and keep it between that 27 and 38 degrees. And that will just keep things going as quick as we can. Um, just mixing my sugar and my yeast together and then I'll leave that to sit for five to ten minutes or just until it gets frothy. The only reason that you bother to activate the yeast is just to see if it's still alive otherwise there's nothing wrong with just putting it straight into the um, flour and um, just making your dough and letting that go. Anyway I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, that's only been a few minutes, I think about maybe five, and you can see that the yeast has definitely risen already. Uh, it's nice and fluffy looking. It smells like, um, smells yeasty, which is always encouraging. And I'm just going to add my, whoa, blowing out the light on that one. Um, so I've got my flour and my salt. And just get the lighting right. We also got my flour and my salt. I'm just going to grind up the salt. Nice and small, the salt flakes. So you can just use table salt, but you just uh, knock it down a little bit less. And just mix that through a bit. Add your oil. And then pour in your yeasty mixture. You can mix that up a little bit and pour that in. So you get all the yeast and this is probably a slightly over hydrated mixture but I like it to be a bit of a, a wetter mix I find it easier to work with I uh, get softer softer dough out of it so just keep mixing it around until it starts to come away from the sides until it starts to come away from the sides. Then with a bench scraper, just take all the, all the stuff out of the, the bowl. Down off the surface that's been lightly floured, or you can flour it after. Don't need much. And just start forming that gently into a ball of dough. Uh, if the dough is too sticky you can add a little bit more flour try not to go too um, crazy with it if it's too dry you can add a little bit more water um, you really don't have to um, adhere to too many rules with this
Um, the dough is done when it's no longer super sticky. So just keep picking it up, folding it over and kneading it with the heel of your, your hand. Holding it on itself. With each turn, there we go. Now I'm not going to give this a super crazy amount of kneading, um, only two to five minutes. Most people would say go for ten, but you really don't need to. literally just until it's not super sticky anymore so you can see it's no no longer still got a little bit of stick it's getting that gluten development happening but we just need it to stop doing that as much so that needs another two three minutes maybe If you have overhydrated your dough, it's really important to have a dough scraper. They make your life easier. You just pick up the dough with it, tidy it into a ball, add a tiny little bit of flour to it, and uh, go back to kneading. It works really well. Dough scraper, good, in, good investment. Okay, that's feeling good now. So that is, I can pick it up and move it around, and it's got more stretch. It's still got a little bit of stick to it, which is fine because I want a wetter dough, but it's not actively as sticky. So it needs another little bit. Again, you don't need to be like He-Man to do this. You just gotta keep it moving around, just pick it up and fold it. You're not even using full body weight or anything like that. You're just keeping it moving, folding it onto itself and rolling it about a bit. Now, I've never really understood the whole window pane test thing, so it's done when it doesn't stick to your hands as much, really. So I can do that, and it doesn't come away. I'll rest and hold on it, and it's still like it'll start to get a little bit sticky, but it doesn't come up with my hand. So that's how I know my dough's done. It's got a nice pull to it, so it does still stick a little bit to your hands, but it's not. It's not too gummy. And again, if you hold it, it's a little bit like um, silly putty. If you hold it for a long time, it will melt onto you. But yeah, once it starts coming away cleanly, it's fine. Really, don't go any more than like five to seven minutes. You just don't need to. All right, so I'll put that back in the bowl. Just oil my bowl. A little bit of oil it will help stop it sticking. Hold that over a few times in there. And then I will put some glad wrap on it and we'll be right. And then I will put this in a warm place to prove. So I only need it to come up. Like it, yeah, you sort of know when it when it's ready. It looks like it's doubled in size. So 
I will come back shortly and I'll show you how I speed this, this up. This is my hack for speeding up the um, proofing process. Yeast is most active between about 28 and 38 degrees, so 27 to 38 degrees. And it's still viable and fine up to about, I think, uh, high 50s, 60 degrees. Now we're talking um, Celsius here, so into a basin of water and just test that with this cheap instant read thermometer. And we're sitting at 38.8, 39. I think this will hit about 40 degrees, which is fine. It won't hurt the yeast. And as that basin of water cools down, it means that the yeast will be experiencing um, optimum growth for the longest period possible. So, yeah, I'll leave that for about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, and come back and have a look, see how we're going. The dough's been floating here in the um, warm bath for uh, about 35 minutes, and that's all it needs to uh, basically be ready for um, stage two. So I'll take that out, knock it back, and roll it into uh, buns. All right, I've lightly floured my surface, and I'm just going to dump my dough here out, and generally most people would give this a bit more of a knead, um, or punch it back quite aggressively. Um, I generally try not to. I am going to do a lot to these to turn them into little buns, so I don't really feel the need to um, do a lot to them. I'm just going to chop that to thirds. Yeah. There we go. So I should have six pieces. Try and get them all roughly equal. This is just a little bit extra, but you know, so 88, 82, 100, so I can have some of that. Yep, 84, 82, 93, 96. Uh, which one was a little bit lacking? 88, 87. Yeah, that'll do. That's close enough. And then, what I want to do is stretch these, roll them up, and then just tuck them under themselves. So, what I'm doing is building tension across the top here. So just tuck these under themselves. And I'm just kind of pinching and folding, pinching and folding in. And what building the tension does is means that the buns will actually rise upright instead of just spreading out. So, and pinch and fold, pinch and fold. And this is why I don't really worry about knocking back the dough because it's just not really necessary. So pinch all that nice. That's a nice smooth surface there. And I've got my baking tray. Let's pop that on there. And next one, so I'm just going to stretch that out, roll it up, and then just start forming those into themselves. I'll put that there. Same again, stretch it out, roll it up. So all I'm doing is just building a bit of tension in the actual dough. So I got a nice, nice rise, nice even surface, and just helps to form nice buns. Stretch, roll, fold it all in. and just fold it all into the back. You can sort of feel the top of it get tighter as you go. Then you know you're ready. 
You just want them as even as you can get them. We're nearly there. So I've just stretched them, rolled it, and then folded it into thirds onto itself. And then I just keep folding the edges in until you feel the tension come across the top. So until you feel this section here become a little bit tighter. And one more perfect little bun. Alright, so now we space those relatively evenly. And you could put them all together and you'd get a bit of a nice forced rise and they'll all join up. Um, that's fine, I just kind of want those a little bit more separate. And then cover them loosely with some cling film. and leave them to prove somewhere warm for half an hour to 40 minutes. So um, I usually put them back in the basin, um, basin filled with some warmer water this time so that the warmth rises, not hot, just warmer. And a couple of glasses just to support the, um, the tray and it's a little bit excessive, but it works otherwise if it's a cold day, they'll continue to rise regardless, just on their own. Um, you could just leave them out on the bench for an hour or two and they'll rise perfectly. Um, if it's an average to warm day, you've got maybe 40, minute, 40 minutes to um, an hour at the very most. And it's really just when they increase again by about a third, uh, you know they're ready to go in the oven. So this is my next hack for speeding up the whole process. I've got a basin of hot water, the same one that I made the bread in. Um, the hot water helps to clean my bowl. And I've just got a dish tray um, over top of the sink. And the water there is warm enough that you'll get some residual heat rising up and just helping to uh, set my buns. All right, so they will prove now and I'll leave that. Um, I'll ch come back and check it in 15, 20 minutes. Uh, this is after only five minutes, so I've already started to uh, rise quite a bit and they'll continue to do that for another five, 10 minutes and I'll check them again. The buns have finished their forced rise. So this has been exactly half an hour over the um, basin of warm water. And I'm just going to brush them with a little bit of milk. And these aren't going to be crusty buns, they're just soft ones. The milk does help a little bit with browning, but really it's just to help stick the um, sesame seeds to them, more than anything else. So the texture that, not the texture, the tension that I've built across the top of the buns will help uh, for the buns to get some extra height in the oven once they start to cook. Gently brush them with a little bit of milk. And they should be nice. And then sesame seeds, sprinkle those on. Uh, go crazy, sesame seeds are always good. Lots and lots of sesame seeds. Can't go wrong with sesame seeds. Obviously, if you don't have sesame seeds, it doesn't really matter. Uh, while these have been proving, I've preheated my oven, so that's another good way that you can prove your um your buns. You can just sit them on top of your cooker while the oven's preheating, and providing they don't get too hot, 
um, the extra warmth, just the extra kind of warmth in the room tends to help. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of salt over the top of these. It's just the Meldon flaky salt, just because it's kind of nice and crunchy and pleasant. And yeah, that is it. They're ready to go in the oven. So I've got the oven at 220 degrees Celsius and they will be cooked for 20 minutes. I'll check them at about, mm, I'll check them at about 17 minutes though, just in case. And of course, all ovens are different. Um, if you've got a, a softer oven, like mine's fan forced and tends to be quite aggressive. So if you've got a softer oven, um, you'd cook them at um, 2.30. Anyway, I will pop them in the oven now. Yeah, quick look now, it's only been about 13 minutes. So just tapping those, they feel like they're already cooked. I am going to take them out now. A quick look at these. I'm just going to check the bottom. Yep, that sounds hollow. So, yep, that's cooked. I'm going to leave those for 20 minutes and they'll be ready to eat. So, all done. Beautiful. I've got another dough that's just finished proving and to slow it down I've had it in the fridge um, just because I had other things to do so made it and popped it in the fridge and it's continued to um, work its magic um, quite well. Just going to cut this into six pieces again and I'm going to turn this one into mini hot dog buns. So again the scales I'm just going to double check I'm going for between like uh, high 80s and 90 I think a little bit of that off 83 see so how we go 76 how's that one 105 whoa 99, take some more of that off, so 84, that's all good, 86, 90, grab that 86 and give that some more, 93, 93. yeah that one can have some more, this is a slightly wetter though, so that's fine, and then, same thing again, I want to stretch these, Roll them, and then roll them the other way, oh, flatten them out, roll them the other way. I'm going to try and stretch that into a hot dog bun shape. And uh, where's my seal there? There's my seal, put that down there. And that should work reasonably well. We'll see how this goes. Never really done this before, so. But I get the concept of building the tension across the bun. So that it all rises correctly. bit of wheat flour there, that's funny. And put the seal down on the tray. Sort of use the 
bench to provide some extra tension as you're rolling it onto itself. These are going to be fat little rolls, they're not going to be hot dog buns at all, but that's alright. I think I've already done that one that way, whoops. But I'll just get a bit of extra tension across it. Getting there. These are definitely inexpertly shaped, but do you know what? At least there's some effort made towards shaping them, so hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll work out reasonably. Just drop some paper across the top, Not paper, some plastic across the top, and leave them covered loosely and they will rise. All good. So these are my um, mini hot dog rolls. They have been brushed with, well they've been proved, and they've been brushed with a little bit of milk and a little bit of, um, they've had a sprinkle of sesame seeds and some salt. I'm just going to use a scalpel just to open up the top of them. Just a quick little run across the top. And that should give me a nice pattern, hopefully. Should really be done with a lame, um, rather than just a lame baker. <laughs> uh, terrible. Uh, all good. That'll do. Hopefully they'll open up a little bit in the oven and we'll get a little bit more interest from the top of these. And Yeah, they'll open up in the oven and we'll see how that goes. These are my hot dog buns. They have been cooking for about 10 minutes and uh, at about uh, maybe seven minutes in, I have thrown a tray of water in there. Just a thin tray with about half a cup of water in it at the bottom and that'll help to give them a crispy outside. Uh, you just need a little bit of steam towards the end of the cooking process and they'll come up nice. So I'll give that another couple of minutes and they'll be ready to come out. These are my lazy thrown together hot dog rolls, all done. So they came up quite nice. They've got a little bit of um, little bit of crunch to the outside. They're not super crunchy. This bread's not really supposed to be, but it's always nice to give it a little bit of um, something extra. And they came up quite well. These are my other buns. These have been left to sit. So these are quite soft. These are supposed to be super soft and they will be super delicious. You can see just how easy and how quick that all comes together. You don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. You don't really have to know too much about what you're doing to get a good result. Now, if you wanted to use this, um, so each of these is one uh, mixture. If you wanted, you could just use this same bread recipe to make one single big loaf of bread. Um, you use the same technique that I used for these, but you just roll the whole or stretch it all out into one sheet and then roll it up and then flatten it and stretch it and roll it up the other way and set it on the seam. So just pinch the seam at the bottom together and then let it prove and that extra roll will give it um, time. When you're doing a whole batch in one loaf, you wouldn't uh, generally force the rise. You want it to rise more evenly so you'd spend a lot more time um, allowing it to prove at a slightly lower temperature. So that's it, all done. Thank you. Oh, 
Perfect, Fred.